Jason, congrats. Halloween is a wonderful film and terrifying as well. Many thanks. It's, it's genuinely quite scary in places, but funny as well. Yeah, yeah. I think the best horror movies have a lot of humor because when you have humor, it gives the audience a minute to relax. And when they're mm. relaxed and caught off guard, they get they, you can scare them more. So I think you got to kind of drive the adrenaline up and then push it down to drive it up again, as it, opposed to keeping, if you try and keep it at this level the whole time, it usually doesn't work. And then the audience has heart attacks. You've got lawsuits That's on your great. Hands and the more what? lawsuits, the better. All oh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, in terms of Michael Myers, Myers, he's such an iconic uh, movie villain, right? Like, he's up there with Freddy and Jason and, yeah. and, and whatnot. Um, what do you, is, it, is it just the fact that he's got like a super creepy mask? What is it, do you think, about Michael Myers? That I, think it's his, I think it's his simplicity. And I think the fact that the, the, the desire for... for Hollywood to do backstory, that he has no backstory, there's no explanation. He's just pure embodied evil. Mm. And you don't know if it's supernatural or not. You don't know why it could be or couldn't be supernatural. The fact that there's a lot of mystery around him, mm. not so much in a lot of the middle movies, but in the first movie and in our movie. And I think that's what makes him so iconic and so scary. Mm -hmm. I kind of liken him to a shark. He's like a human shark. He, it's like he, a shark, he doesn't right? stop moving, yeah. doesn't sleep, just kills everything in his path. Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. that I want to give sharks a bad name, but no. you know. No, we yeah. can't do that anymore. We can't do it's that anymore. It's very bad. We love sharks. We love sharks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this being a direct sequel to John Carpenter's 1978 original, of course, mm -hmm. was it always the plan to do that? Because obviously there's like, what, uh, seven or eight sequels, a couple of reboots of, of the series. Like, was it always like, let's just cut off the rest and go for a direct sequel? It wasn't my plan. My plan was uh, to make a great Halloween movie. And I didn't know what what it would entail. But right. when I reached out to David and Danny, they came up with the idea of, of, of what the movie is, of, of a continuation of the first movie 40 years later. And um, and I loved it. I mean, I, I, I at the time, I don't think I appreciated it enough. I was like, it's kind of like, I think that'll work. And it actually worked much better than I anticipated. And I'm very pleased that they came up with the idea. I can't imagine what else it could have been at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. And I imagine it would have been quite daunting as well because of, you know, there's so many fans of the series. Like, to take something like that on and try and reinvent it must have been kind of, I don't know, a bit, bit scary? Yeah, it was very, it was definitely, uh, I wouldn't say scary, a little intimidating. Um, and, and people, the fans are very um, passionate and they've been disappointed a lot. Mm. So, so I, you know, you want to you wanna do something that, that, that is fulfilling. And, uh, and I, think that, I think David and Danny, I think that they did. But yes, going into it, there was a lot of trepidation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also got the, the blessing from The Godfather. John yes, Carpenter got on board this. Can you tell me a bit about how you got John involved? Sure. So, so I, uh, for a long time, I wanted to do the movie. And there was a lot of endless conversation. And finally, Miramax agreed to let us a partner with them to make the movie together. Um, but my, my involvement was conditioned on John executive producing. I didn't want to do a Halloween movie without John Carpenter. I just, mm. it's part of the way that I believe that you make good franchises is you keep the creator involved. Mm. So I went to John and uh, he was in the beginning very, very cynical and dismissive. And I think what got him is I said, look, John, they're going to make this movie with us or without us. I'm not doing it without you. So if you say no, I'm going to say no. And wouldn't it be fun instead of complaining about it to see if we could make it good? together mm. and um, and that was uh, I think that's what did it and he was a he was the very very big guiding force that loomed over every big decision we made all the way through the course of the movie he wasn't involved in the data he wasn't on the set every day mm. but in terms of hiring David and Danny in terms of blessing their concept mm. um, and, he, and and for instance when they came up with the concept which I thought stupidly, you know, I should have said this is the greatest idea ever. I didn't say that. I didn't say it wasn't. I just said, I think this will work. Mm. John said, I love it. And that gave me a lot of confidence. And that happened multiple times through the course of the process of making the movie. Great, 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 yeah. great, great. And was it always the plan to get him to do an updated score for this as well? Because obviously- It wasn't even it wasn't even the plan. He came back and he said, I'll only executive produce if I can do the music. And we kind of said, that's the greatest thing ever. Like, yeah, when, yeah I mean, we, we, yeah. We said it, we would, we'd love you to do the music. And so so it was from the very, it was baked in from the very start that he was going to do the music on the movie. Great, great. And was it difficult getting Jamie Lee Curtis back? Because she's obviously played the role several times. Uh, but having seen the film, she has a wonderful role in it. So I imagine she would have jumped at the chance to, to get back involved. She didn't jump at the chance. She um, and she's an executive producer on the movie. And she, if there are any kind of leaders of of this movie, it would be John and and Jamie. They kind of led us through a lot of a lot of turmoil right. together in different ways. 
Um, what really got her is she, uh, her godson is Jake Gyllenhaal, and Jake Gyllenhaal had just starred in Stronger, which is a movie, movie that David Gordon Green had directed. And mm -hmm. Jake said, David is the greatest guy ever. And that made her open to meet David. When she met David, heard what the story was, she was in, and it, it was lucky for us. Great, great, yeah. great, great. Uh, and in terms of scary stuff, what, what scares you personally? Donald Trump. Donald Trump, <laughs> right. He was a nice shade of Halloween pumpkin orange. As he well. looks like a pumpkin. He looks yeah, like a pumpkin. He looks exactly like a pumpkin. Fantastic. Yeah. Maybe. I wish. I wish he was a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> and I, maybe I'll turn him into a pumpkin. You should do that. You should start up a new franchise, I'm and it's all on about it. you know. I'm working. That's a great idea. Excellent. All right. Well, I expect an executive producer credit on this, just of because course. we've kind of like workshop the, the idea right now, or a lawsuit, or a. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for your time, Jason. Thank you. Great.